would love to begin this talk by hearing from the audience first. I'm going to say some statements, some dialogues rather, and if you have heard them too, let me know by a show of your hands. Before we do that, let me establish a safe space here. There is no right or wrong answer. There are no judgments, so feel free to be honest. I am not going to pick you at random from the audience and ask you questions based on something that you have heard. So here goes. Once more, I am going to say some statements and if you have heard them too, let me know by a show of hands. Art is a hobby. It is okay to engage in art for fun, but not sure if it can have any real, tangible outcomes. What will you do learning drama or music when ultimately you're going to become an engineer or a doctor? Math, science, literature, these are important subjects that can make or break your life. Art and all is secondary. I would like everyone to look at the screen. This is a famous painting by a very, very renowned abstract painter. Even a five-year-old could have done that. <laughs> Thank you so much for being honest. And trust me when I say this, all of us have been here before. It can be argued that the arts is not the most profitable, economical, lucrative subjects for us to concentrate our energies on. I can almost hear some parents rationalizing their child's engagement in art by saying something like, it's a hobby, but is it a career? Let me tell you, I am also an architect. I too rationalize my passion for art by taking something that I felt was more profitable and I pursued architecture, but I guess the joke's on me because straight out of architecture school, Mansi and I co-founded an arts organization. I wanted to pursue art. I wanted to pursue art in a way that I could first show myself and then show others how engaging in art had tangible real-time outcomes that could affect change. So while Chavi was trying to figure out how art can impact lives, I entered the other side of the spectrum. I entered a two-year fellowship in an under-resourced community and taught in a government school. In those two years, I spoke to multiple stakeholders, my students, their parents, government teachers, and everyone questioned the fact that children needed more than just what was in the textbook. People questioned it argued about it, complained about it, but no one really did anything about it. And the solution-oriented person that I was, I wanted to, to know why there was no way a child was just expressing themselves in a classroom. Why were my children constantly asking me why they didn't use their crayons enough? As an outsider, I knew the number of challenges they faced every day in their communities, but as an educator, was I really giving them space to express what these challenges were? Was I creating a safe space for my students? And was I just giving them space to feel joy? So what started off just as art classes on a Saturday, then became a not-for-profit organization, which focuses on creativity and social emotional development for students from under-resourced communities. But why do you think Chavi and I dedicated, have dedicated our lives in this endeavor? It's because we believe that art has the power to change lives. Our children are exposed to a gond, madhubani, puppet making, origami. And sometimes they even learn about Yayoi Kusama from Japan or Van Gogh Bhaiya from Netherlands and even Natwar Bhavsar from India. But what does this do to them? It teaches them how they can understand themselves and others. It teaches them how they can solve problems just through being compassionate and communicative. It teaches them a very important thing. You can and you should love others. 
but only if you love yourselves first. This is all through one universal language that has no boundaries, the arts. Over the last few years, we have seen such beautiful impact stories just on the ground. How a student can now express themselves without writing in English, Hindi or Urdu. We have seen that teachers have transformed their classrooms by being creatively inclined now. All this because art does change lives. So, before we go any further, let's understand the definition of arts. What are the arts really? While there are many definitions that exist, the one that is the most relevant in today's time is as follows. The arts are defined as modes of expression that need a skill or imagination in creation of aesthetic objects, environments, experiences that can be shared with others. Let's break this down a little. Expression is something that you say or you do to show how you're feeling or to show your opinions. On a bad day, this is something that I would draw to show that I'm having a bad day. But on a good day, I love bright colors. So this is what I would show. This is the kind of painting that I would do. Hence, modes of expression becomes the different ways in which you can express your feelings or your opinions. It can be music, drama, theater, poetry, sculpting, painting. It is a diverse range of human activities. These use a skill or an imagination. Very important. A skill is not unique to an individual. It can be developed. There are varying degrees of it. Like to sing, it's a skill. There is an expert, there's an expert, there's a novice, there's a beginner. Imagination, however, is unique to an individual and it needs to be cultivated. So what are these creations? You create something using your skill or imagination to show how you're feeling or to show your opinion. In that case, these creations become a beautiful painting, a beautiful object, a sculpture. They can also be an experience, like when you experience an opera, or they can also be an environment. I remember going to a concert where Zakir Hussain was playing tabla. That was an experience for me. I also remember walking the walls of a gallery where I was seeing paintings by a talented artist called Amrita Shergil. And I could sense the strong feminist aura in the environment that she had created. But the most important part of the arts is that it can be shared with others. It is a communal activity. This is wholly the definition of arts that we align with. Not this. Not this bucket with a cloth that's still life for which you used to get A minus or B minus. Not this. Our art looks like a five-year-old did it. A five-year-old didn't do this. A 40-year-old did it. But our art looks like this. But how does this really translate into the real world, right? So I'm going to tell you two stories. The first one of a young boy who was studying to be an artist. But at that time, his country was taken over by a foreign rule. He decided to join his country and fight for independence. He did it the way he knew best, expressing himself through the arts. So he boycotted all foreign paints, all foreign art forms, and went back to the roots. He then decided to sell it to the masses, not the rich landlords. Through this, he decided and wanted people around him to just understand their country and feel proud of their culture and heritage. The second is of a boy in school. A very shy boy, never spoke to anyone around him. His teacher had never seen him smile, always kept to himself, didn't really write anything in the notebook, never spoke. But one day, there was a surprise art and craft class. And that day, everything changed. He first smiled and then laughed. He started talking to people around him. A week later, all his notebooks were filled with art. Now, if you're a teacher, I can imagine 
what you must be thinking. That's for your English and math. But this teacher was actually really happy. Now, if, it's, if it isn't even uh, obvious or very obvious, the teacher in the story is me. And the student is my student, Samir. I've changed his name to protect his identity, but his story remains the same. The story of him, the th stories of thousands of children who've been impacted through art, and even the story of the first artist, who was actually one of India's pioneering artists, Jamini Roy. So wh what parallels can we draw from these two stories? Young boys used art during challenging times used art as a way to express themselves. But why am I telling you all of this? Do we want everyone in the audience to now become an artist, even though we believe that you all are? Or is it because we want every student that we work with to become an artist? No. I'm just trying to say the obvious. Just like a biologist will tell you about the different functions of um, living organisms around you, Art plays a huge role as well. It teaches you about communication. It teaches you about collaboration. It teaches you about expression. It teaches you how to become compassionate. And it just teaches you so much about you. So there was a researcher from Stanford named Shirley Bryce Heath. She was surprised to find that students that engage in art for over nine hours in a week actually showed higher academic levels of achievement. These were also the same students that showed high attendance levels in school. The University of Chicago had a very interesting report. They conducted a survey with adults that were just entering a medical profession. From these adults, the ones that actively or even passively engaged in the arts like music or theater or painting, they had, they showed desirable qualities that one would want in a physician. They were more empathetic. They were more emotionally intelligent. They were even more resourceful compared to the ones that didn't engage in art as much. These adults were also less prone to a professional burnout. If you remember the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic, it was as if art was being used as a symbol of grit and resilience by the community. There were people singing in the balcony. There were doctors that were clad in PPE suits, but that didn't stop them from dancing in front of their patients to uplift their spirits. Our streets were covered with graffitis commending the work of healthcare workers. Isn't it amazing to see that somehow the community had found the power to heal through the arts? When you think about these stories, when you think about the stories that Mansi just narrated, about these studies, about these experiences, you realize that art largely has four areas of impact. Awareness. It creates awareness for you, for me, for everyone around us by essentially becoming a channel of communication. Where words fail, art takes over. It builds expression that is unique to us. No two humans are identical. Even identical twins are not identical. The beauty of art is that it captures that uniqueness. It captures that individuality. Art connects us to ourselves. It connects us to the people around us. The children that we engaged with in arts for a year, we saw that they had a 20% increase in their social skills. They were better at communication. They were better at collaboration. They were also good at emotion regulation. Art creates dialogue. But we're not just going to tell you that. We're going to show you that today. So everyone has a bag with them. In that bag, you have a notebook and a pen. Please remove the notebook and pen and open to a fresh new page. Don't ask any questions, just listen, okay? Once you open to a fresh new page, look to your right or to your left and find a partner. It could be someone that you know, but trust me, this exercise was, works best with strangers. Okay, I'm going to wait for 10 seconds and you're going to be ready with your partner 
and your fresh new page. Okay, now listen to the instructions very clearly. No questions to be asked. You're going to look at your partner. Can I see everyone looking at their partners? You're going to be maintaining eye contact. Once you do, you're now going to be drawing the portrait the, of your partner. So you're going to be outlining or drawing the face of your partner without looking down at the paper. Now I'm guessing you all are finding this really simple. Okay, let's add another layer of complexity. You're going to be doing this in the next 30 seconds and you cannot lift the pen from your paper. Quickly repeating it again, 30 seconds, look at your partner, eye contact, no looking down at the paper and no lifting the pen. Your time starts now, go. I can see a lot of artists at work. Okay, stop. Now comes the hard part. Okay, you are now going to write a message. I'm a teacher, so I'm going to ask the class to... Thank you. You're now going to... This is the hard part, so I need everyone to listen very clearly. You're now going to write a message for your partner. It may be someone you know. It was your partner, or if they were a stranger, they're no more a stranger, they're now a new friend. You're going to write a message for your partner, something that you feel would uplift their day or just make them feel better. You have 10 seconds to do this, go. Okay, you're now going to tear the paper and give it to your partner. Once you receive your portrait, show it off. Look at that. That's a Picasso. Look at the other one. That's a Basque. You're literally walking out of this auditorium with a version of something that could be worth a million dollars. Congratulations. So let's get back to this, right? Again, this, I need to get the teacher and me out. We'll wait for 10 more seconds till you appreciate your art and then get back to it. So, let's just jokes apart, right? What really happened in the last three minutes? You enjoyed, you made a new friend, you actually had a dialogue through art. Doesn't really matter what you made, what you created, but just really think about it, right? When's the last time you've created some art? And when's the last time you've actually received a portrait or a piece of art and a really sweet message? Because in the world we live in, we're just writing quick emails and sending even quicker WhatsApp messages. Doesn't this really make you pause and wonder? We hope the last 15, 20 odd minutes that we've spent with you together have caused at least a slight shift in your mindset or reinforce the belief that arts can impact you in a positive way. It can impact people and communities across varied geographies and contexts. The arts are powerful. It can be a language to communicate the most complicated and the most intimate human thoughts and emotions. 
that a spoken language is just too limited to cover. The arts can build or alter perceptions, attitudes, behaviors, shift mindsets and moods because the arts is powerful. The arts is you. Thank you so much.